welcome to World of Monsters, I'm Monster Master Arthur, and I wanted to do a little preparation video for the Monster Totems new series that you guys voted for. And I've been contemplating and thinking about actually doing a series intro for all the series that we have on the channel. I don't know if it's necessary, but you guys can let me know down below. But for this particular series, since it is kind of... Um, well, maybe some people don't know exactly about how this topic, what this topic is exactly and how to go about it. And we, uh, as you know, I want to get pretty serious and deep with it. As serious as I do with pretty much any video on this, on this channel. But this topic actually relates to some things that are actually followed. And so we're going to be talking about mythical creature totems. And that is, if you know the word totems, you might also know the term mythical creature or monster medicine, uh, monster spirit guides, monster power monsters, or the magic of these creatures. Magic spelled with uh, a CK at the end, as I think since days of Crowley, I believe that begun. But don't quote me on that, I'm not sure. And that's what distinguishes the magic, spiritual magic, as we talk, as in gaming we know as wizards do, different... Aside from the trick magic, illusionist magic that you see at Vegas and TV shows. Those are more illusions and tricks, but when we talk about magic with a CK at the end, not just a C, we talk about those ancient energy world-working arts. So basically, since so many of you did vote for this series, I'm taking that you are aware of animal totems. And that's what we're doing here, just replace the word animal with monster and mythical creature instead of creatures that we know in our, on our planet. And also aside from animal totems, there's actually totems of plants, sort of, as different individual types of plants also carry symbolic meanings and purposes, uh, such as animals, in some ancient uh, occult ways. So I did want to make this introduction to make it known that this is for anyone out there regardless of belief system and that's important to state at the beginning and probably at the end of this video again just so people don't get offended or misunderstand this channel. Now in regards to animal totems and spirit guides and such I have a feeling that the newer religions and I regard the newer religions as being the Abrahamic religions, Judaism, uh, Catholicism, Christianity, things like that, even Muslim, as being newer religions that don't cover animals in a particularly respectful or a, well, spiritual deep manner. And that's definitely an approach I like with the ancient uh, kind of spiritual, I wouldn't say religious, but the spiritual approaches around the world, such as what the newer religions do as naming the animals the beasts that we hunt, that are just primitive creatures out there, and that's kind of the limit without giving them a certain purpose in this universe. A purpose beyond being simply food to us. And as far as the non-religious folk out there that have a more science-based belief system, this allows us to delve into the creation and purpose of animals on this planet and how it relates to even our own adaptation and evolution. In addition with this kind of contemplation that's going to be going on in these videos, we can delve deeper into the surrounding consciousness around us and touching even upon certain areas of quantum physics and how everything breaks down into vibration or waves and directive and purpose. So my goal of these videos is not to have huge debates in the comments section below about religion and creation and all that, at least not yet but rather for personal experimentation, self-development, if you will, something to play around with, with logical self-analysis, game creation, as a lot of game creators actually have a lot of knowledge in the ancient magical arts or arcane arts, and that's what makes their, the games even better or more creative or more realistic, such as when creating different characters, wizards, witches, uh, warlocks and the spells uh, and the spells they work and what they look like they actually take a lot of inspiration and influence from our own human history also i could see these videos being helpful with artwork or just random contemplation or fun thought exploration that that's probably what most people were expecting from these videos so first again before i get too deep on the monster totems i have to explain to you 
animal totems and what that means and kind of the history and where that all comes from. For one, all these beliefs don't just come from shamans and ancient medicine men, although they're the ones that kind of organized it and things, but they also come from, well, old cultural ways and beliefs and society. Uh, look at old fairy tales and children's stories talking about, for example, where the zebra got its stripes. Just things like that. Cultures develop their own stories from observing nature and animals around, which later became touched upon and improved by certain individuals in those societies. And with such, even though I mentioned that religion sort of doesn't give animals the, the virtue, I guess, that that I would have hoped for, actually some religions also incorporated animals into their stories and into the ways of belief. And again, it spawned from societal and just personal observations of these creatures around us. So now for maybe the more notable sources where we got all this knowledge from, we have to thank or we have to acknowledge first the Native Americans. And that's where most people know spirit guides and animal totems from is the Native American culture and the shamans there that taught about this from the ancient times. Now do keep in mind that the people of the entire planet, all various sections of it, have knowledge and taught about these things and these sides to animals in our history. And we do know of that, so I'm not listing out everybody in every culture here, but just some better known ones. So the next one has to be the Zulu of Africa and their wise or medicine men or women. Again, very in touch with nature, very observant of nature, and, and logical with the categorizing the things that they observed. Not just silly, pretty fairy tales, but things that went into their everyday life, into how they organized their tribes and societies and villages, and to how they treated nature in return. Just very, very similar to the Native Americans. Then, of course, in ancient Europe, you have the ancient Celts, the Celtic ways, and their approaches. You had the ancient witches. Now, I'm talking, no, I'm not talking about witches as in the offensive ways of, for example, Halloween, we see them, but real witches, the wise women, as they were the wise men of villages and societies. Along those came the druids, and even gypsies had their own in-depth ways of believing the world around and how to coexist with it. Now, of course, I can't go too far without mentioning the hermetic ways. And if you don't know what that's about, just Google hermetic and have a short reel read about that just to catch up your knowledge with what hermeticism was and how in-depth and how crucial it is to knowing that if you're going to get too deep into any religions out there or spiritual belief systems. In-depth looks at animals are also somewhat covered there. And then alongside all this ancient stuff, of course, we have the zodiac, astrology. The Native Americans also had their astrology system, which had symbolic creatures and different representations of stars and structures in the skies. And this is one quick way, by the way, to figure out what your animal totem is, or one of them. And you'll see what I mean more as we get deeper into what totems are. Then there's the Greek zodiac, which has some animal symbolism within it as well, which actually derives from ancient Babylon, which is even prior to what, how Egypt developed and started changing those teachings, from which the Greek later adopted a lot as well. So again, going back to the roots, ancient Babylon. Then we have the Chinese zodiac or astrology, which also is only animals, such as the Native American one. And what's interesting is that the Native American or many other approaches and looks into animals very closely relate in character that you'll see with the zodiac animals of the Chinese zodiac and how they explain those people are. Now, they're a little bit different because as Zodiac works, there's only 12 or so, or whatever the number is, per individual, so they have to be more generalized. But if you're going to look at straight-up animal totems and animal spirit guides, then you can be very specific on them. So you can't completely go off of Zodiac's Zodiac signs to tell you everything about that animal and to question yourself, because they're going to be too general. But the point again that I make is how similar you will see the characteristics and the symbolism in words that they talk about these creatures and these zodiacs relates to the approaches and views of them 
uh, within their totem and spirit guide ways. I do hope that made sense. Then there's ancient Indian astrology, which is known as Vedic astrology, which apparently might just be one of the most in-depth astrological sort of uh, approaches out there. And it's also fascinating, and it also implements some animal uh, spiritual side aspects and symbolism. Actually, within Vedic astrology, every planet is representative of an animal. Then you have Eskimos, Tibetans, Aborigines, and many more that have in-depth looks and understandings to the world around them. And also, not to mention another reason for us desiring to get to know animals even better and get on a different spiritual level with them, is the own, our own knowledge that has progressed over the ages and our biological and ecological understanding and observation of these animals and how they work also adds to, well, simple things as determining which is our favorite animal. So basically, if you got a little lost by this point, I was just trying to explain sort of the history and where this foundation of thinking about animals in this different way kind of spawned from. And again, it came from all around the world, from the ancient days and the new days now, and our movement of understanding and knowledge only helped to push this kind of understanding and belief system forward. Well, particularly for certain individuals out there. Maybe not necessarily all, as some people still disregard this stuff as completely fantasy or useless knowledge. And you know what, if you're watching this video and you'll be enjoying this series, that's absolutely fine. Again, I welcome you to take whatever you want from these videos and not to feel pushed or forced in any belief sort of direction or anything like that at all. Now in my next section of discussion, I wanted to talk about how it works, how this whole animal spirit totem thing works. Okay, so first of all, meanings. Once you see an animal or you've discovered something, you're looking at the meaning of it. And we're not talking about what it does physically, what it eats. Well, we are, but not as a zoological, simple kind of uh, perspective. We're looking at meaning, meanings, for example, like a dog is known to be loyal, a crow is known to be wise. And why do they have such symbolic meanings and so in depth? And well, the, the quick answer to this is over hundreds, if not thousands of years of observation by people that studied this, by noted it down and wrote it into books and saw repetitive things in nature and the patterns and such that finally brought up these conclusions. Now, if you are experienced in the unknown studies, as I prefer to call them over spiritual as of late, then all of this stuff may be sort of... Uh, known to you and old, but just bear through this video to see what other message I want to convey uh, going with this series on this particular channel. But so a lot of these things you guys will already be aware of. And so as a preparatory video, I'm covering everything for the complete new person to this kind of understanding, as well as the people that understand well and are curious how it's going to fit in with the rest of the channel. And if you're wondering what I'll actually be covering here, about the mythical creatures individually and how the totem works, here's an example with the horse totem, but a really summarized short version. Basically, if a horse is your totem, then you might be in love with travel. You may be a hardworking individual, but sometimes maybe take on tasks a bit too fast. Also, if that is not your totem, then some questions you may want to ask yourself is, what am I feeling rushed to do? What should I hurry up and do? Am I exploring enough? Am I exploring my mind enough? Do I need to take a walk and figure out what exactly I'm doing with my life? Am I being stubborn as a mule? So that's a really, really short and watered down version of what I'll be talking about when I cover, cover different mythical creatures and what their meanings and lessons might be to you. Next, a topic that obviously I won't cover in every future video as those will be specific to a a creature and its meaning, but how to find your totem, how to find your animal totem, or well, connect, since I'm talking and explaining animal totems, relate all this to monster slash mythical creature totems. So how do you find your totem or your spirit guide? Well, there's meditations you can do and there's a lot of information out there for this. And if you are really interested in finding and meditations and spiritual approaches to animal totems and spirit guides, please let me know down below. 
I'll try to work it in into this channel and into these videos to make you have a bit, to allow you to have a better understanding of doing this because there are meditations. You can do a meditation of figuring out and reaching a certain animal that appears in your mind's eye that may have an important message for you. And again, I'm not going to go over that particular meditation here or those meditations. But that's one way you can find your animal totem, as well as a quick way being just your favorite one. When you ask a child, what is your favorite animal? They will give you a totem and sometimes you will even clearly see a reflection of that animal or totem in that child's behavior and how it goes about. Also, it may be an animal that just repeats. You have five t-shirts with the same one. Every time somebody gives you a gift, they give you something with this creature relating to it or they did that one time maybe you're having a problem in your life and suddenly a creature floats down like a praying mantis uh, in front of you maybe there's a lesson for you you need to be more patient or an owl or something makes a particularly annoying sound to grab your attention that might be the animal you want to research maybe you turn on the tv and on three different channels you're seeing this particular animal there's a tv show there's a documentary about wildlife in africa focusing on lions at that moment another movie is playing a horror movie with a lion and then there's beauty and the beast with the lion kind of look so as a magician or a mystic or a wizard in these crafts you start to see these things and dots connect in your own mind so you just have to pay attention and have an open mind and be receptive to these things. And the only way to get there is through practice and acknowledging these things and upping your knowledge and meditation and, and various ways to bring forth to your memory what it is you're supposed to be focusing day by day on and practicing. And then pets, of course, especially if you have a fond memory of a pet that passed away a long time ago and you keep having recurring dreams. Um, another one, dreams, can also help you determine uh, your spirit guide at the moment or your ultimate animal totem. You can simply go by feeling and what feels right if you're that kind of intuitive person and if you like doing these approaches like that. Then there's even cards. Ted Andrews, a writer of a great book on connecting with animals and nature around us on a whole different level, develop cards with uh, different animals on them and there's a way that you can go through the cards and figure out your paths too. Uh, the, even there's practices with them that relate to tarot. But a simpler way of doing this is just having equal size cards and writing down an animal's name or putting down a picture of both on those cards, mixing them up and going about a certain way to, fit, to draw out a random one to see which one is yours for the time you can ask questions different various ways and we're not going to get into that right now then there's books on the topic there's rituals there's many many more things you can do to determine your totem now i did mention you have to become kind of receptive with the world and to do that you have to learn to communicate with the world to learn the language of the world and again that's a topic for those that do want to delve deeper into this i'm just kind of setting out different roads and road signs and setting up directions where you guys can head to, to figure out how to do these things and how to figure it out, how to best figure out this kind of stuff for yourself. How and when to learn and to take action. So as I said, an animal can pop out here or there, or it could have always been with you consciously throughout your entire life. You've always loved this animal, you collected all kinds of plush toys of it, whatever it is. So, or it just appears in dreams constantly for you. So now once you know this animal or you're aware of it or its presentation or its new presentation to you, the question is, what do you do next? And that's where you jump into these kind of videos. Although animal videos like this are many on YouTube, there's many decent ones and there are better books that cover this and even websites for each animal too. Just search um, a particular animal such as frog, animal totem and you can read about it there you have a dream about it wake up write it down make sure you do the research on an animal just because you don't like sharks or you're frightened of sharks and you had a scary dream with sharks that's not oh, the only representation is that it's a fear-based thing in the back of your head no the shark has many things to teach you and you should definitely explore those because maybe it's trying to speak to you and what goes without saying is that a huge part of this is subconscious so you may know some things that you are aware of with animal knowledge and what you're dealing with life, but subconsciously, of course, a psychologist 
or doing more in-depth self-analysis, you can learn much more. And animals can help you to pinpoint those things or direct you or guide you. The best word for these things is guide you, as it's very hard to teach someone something in these terms. It is much more likely that they will be guided in a specific direction. And that's what animals are out there to do. No matter what your belief system, this is a nice, peaceful, logical, and beautiful way or a thing to incorporate into your belief system. And if you are aware of familiars, whether from gaming or mystical arts that you already practice, then, well, you should know that that's a, that's a different thing, but it can very closely connect with totems. And being as that's a really cool topic, that is a little bit of a separate thing than the deeper psychoanalysis we will be going into in these series. Okay, so our final main topic is totems. And if you've reached this far in the video, I acknowledge you, I respect you, and I'm grateful. And that's just awesome because that means that you want to have a better understanding of what it is I'll be doing here as I really do want you to. And even the deeper, maybe unexpected side of World of Monsters. So keep in mind through your searches for your animal totem or spirit guides, you may be reached by an animal that you may have never seen or even heard of. And that's also what makes this more relevant to the mythical creatures, because it's that symbolism, that lesson, that's so important. That's the factor of this, the main factor of this. And some people even get an animal that they hate or they laugh at, and then they're surprised that that's their, like, their big spirit guide. And they have a lot to learn from it, obviously, because of how they already approach it with their judgmental preset ways. So again, considering that people have animal totems that they didn't expect or didn't even know of a specific animal, that makes this even more relevant to doing mythical creatures or monsters. Because in the end, it's not about this biological creature, but what exactly it is a re complex representation of. And it is true that some animal totems of the ancient cultures were actually also mythical creatures, which again just helps to support what I just said, that mythical creatures can be looked upon from this perspective as well. And that's why I wanted to do this on World of Monsters, as we'd be the only ones really hitting the other side of the spectrum and really exploring the magic, the mysticism of what this all this spirit guide and guide and totem stuff is all about and how we can work in various ways beyond what books tell us by the way guys i know a lot of you guys aren't that deep into this kind of stuff and mysticism but for those of you that are or have been into it for a long time this isn't necessarily something that beginners would be aware of in terms of those lines but as you learn from many books and creating spells and charms and such things, it comes down to you being the creator of these things and not following line by line and dot by dot. In terms, in these terms, the world, in essence, what I'm saying is the world is a playground, a sandbox. And as you can create anything in the sandbox, as you can in this world. And for you guys out there that aren't in touch with this and are not interested or have no belief or trust in this, then you may be more business bound or understanding of business strategies. And the same kind of thought processes go to creating and running a business and marketing strategies. And you may kind of be able to connect this. And the same goes with you psychologists out there that have a more maybe atheistic approach but try to figure out how to be in control of your own emotions and how that balance goes. Now, I know I'm drawing very general lines all over the place here, but again, as I've mentioned already enough in this video, the point is to draw it all together so that everybody can get something from these videos and not just them being this senseless, pointless entertainment for only some small specific group of people. So as far as animal medicine goes, there's different belief systems in it. There's a belief system that you only have one throughout your entire life. There's belief systems that different ones appear. There's a belief system that if for every direction and for different parts of your persona and who you are, there is this specific animal guide. And again, what I just mentioned before, if you did catch on that, if you have enough experience in this stuff, or at least 
uh, contemplating, then you can set your own ways and strategies of how you want to organize, how you follow this stuff. You don't have to follow a book. Those are guides. They're not specific ways to do it. You can implement your own. And as long as you stick to your own, your own rules and patterns, the world will speak to you through all that. Really hope I'm not losing anybody here. And apparently that main animal that is your guide is the one that's known as the totem. The animal totem. But again, don't let words such as spirit guides, totem, confuse you and stray you. Just keep it simple and treat these creatures we will cover as a teacher and what you can learn from it. Just as we are mirrored images and teachers of one another. So do keep in mind to not just pay attention to these animals physically, although that's very important to know what they eat, uh, how they move about everything, so that you can really analyze them and analyze yourself in return. And so do remember to see them as symbolic guides, the archetypal representation of what they are. And that's what's really fascinating with ancient mythical creatures, as this information really came out about them and traveled through time. Not just that the, there was this crazy creature, but when you look at stories, it really digs deep. And that's why some of the most beautiful or the greatest monster stories we had there, even, even along the lines of Cthulhu. And sorry, I didn't try to pronounce that the best I could. I will if I went once I do a video about Cthulhu. But even the story of Cthulhu or a great literature monsters like that have this whole symbolic and in-depth side to them other than just being the scary face as far as your spirit monster or spirit animal there may be various ones as i've mentioned before that represent various parts and times of your life maybe various segments of your life like your relationship part your health part it's up to you actually how you want to base this belief system and how to make it work around you you just have to make sure that through practice you repeat it and that's how it takes effect basically you organize your own understanding and the rest follows Okay, once again, I don't want to lose anybody out there. This is just for those out there that do want to delve deeper into this stuff and put a lot and shine a bit of a light on it so it doesn't look all dark and scary and bad as many folk and ways have made it seem. But if you're not into any of this stuff, just continue with a light heart and let me please just finish up with this so that finally we can start this series and really have fun looking at the aspects of these creatures out there. So again, what some claim and some belief systems say is that the spirit guides or the animals that do appear to you at times of need and times of contemplation, times of where you're just looking for answers and they just pop up there or just randomly, those we call spirit guides rather than totems. Again, doesn't matter on your wordings of these things, not at this point in time, and it shouldn't really matter in the future, but if you are into these things, there's that little bit of difference that some think are important between what a totem is and what a spirit guide is. Okay, so the final subtopic of the final topic is connecting slash communicating with your totem. And remember, I want this video to serve as a sort of, uh, like a, not a template, but a supportive video, a source that goes along all the videos that you will be watching in the future if you want to take them to a deeper level than just the way I, or not a deeper level, but a more personal level than just the information I'm shooting out on them. So honoring and connecting slash communicating with your totem. This can be done through art. Basically what this is about is giving back and sort of drawing forth a stronger connection with your totem. If it indeed has helped you in your life and you want to show that and you want to grow a stronger communication with it so that you can develop a better understanding of yourself and just have a guide with you, honoring it is the way to do it. And this can be done through art, and I mean all sense of art, drawing it, painting it, creating a song about that particular animal, creating a dance with it, particularly where you mimic it, sculpting it out, finding jewelry with that particular animal and wearing it. Uh, prayers may work for you along the same lines meditation also mental acknowledgement just as in business or in psychology there are certain phrases and words you repeat to yourself to guide yourself and your mind and what you do day by day 
You can also make words of power like that, phrases that you repeat to yourself every day, seeing a picture of it in your mind, having a picture of it in your wallet, and looking at it every once in a while just to kind of remind you of yourself, of your path, of what you're doing right, what wrong, whatever the message is. Acknowledging that message by writing it down and again repeating it to yourself, whatever that message is, writing a poem about it, uh, having a pet that is the same as that animal. For example, if the tortoise is your animal totem, may maybe you want to buy a turtle as that's the closest thing, a uh, similar thing that you can buy with it to create a better relationship with it. Uh, definitely a big one would be educating yourself on it, because if you do want to learn more about it, not just reading spiritual animal totem and animal spirit guidebooks, but also picking up a biological zoological book on that animal, watching a documentary on that animal, or learning how to take care of it, that can help you learn much, much more about it, and in turn about yourself. Owning a figurine of that animal, also creating a fetish, which you may also want to look up that word so that you don't confuse it with the commonly used fetish word and that's something that you create to kind of worship or remind you of something um, and that could be like for example if your animal totem is a bird you may have a stick with a feather attached with it um, maybe yeah maybe some feathers attached to it with that bird carved into the stick something like that and as I mentioned, this could include animal parts, and that's another thing. You may carry around a feather or have a feather in your f in your hair. Have you ever wondered why they often show Native Americans with a feather in their hair? That's exactly why they are honoring a particular bird totem. And bird totems, if you do ever get into this, are quite significant. Rabbit's foot, another one, although you don't want to do this in a distasteful or sick way where you're actually dishonoring an animal by killing it and then trying to honor it by carrying it carrying its body parts. It doesn't work that way. But if you do find this coyote skull or something, then yes, you can keep it, you can honor it, you can work with it, cherish it. Other things you can also do is, of course, rituals. And I don't just mean the religious aspect, but kind of something that's very deep to you that you do in a, in a pattern you repeat. Yes, you can create a, a, your own ritual around it, your own spell even, your own act to act out the animal, as I mentioned in dance or music, acting out the animal is great. Again, that's the reason why you see Native Americans sometimes acting like animals, and even in ancient Chinese ways, which were incorporated into martial arts. A great reminder of your own animal and totem and lessons is wearing a t-shirt with it, or a hat, or a pin, a tattoo. So you can wear it, you can create it, you can just set whatever reminders you need out there. And that's drawing a stronger communication with not just animals out there, but the world, the universe, nature, all of it around, drawing it closer to you and understanding what you're seeing more and more. And so that's just one perspective on this reality. As all you viewers may have your own, you may be in a group with one, you may be in a religion, you may be in a, in a process of figuring out your own psychological understanding of this world, but that's just one aspect to this beautiful existence around us. And remember, there's nothing wrong in contemplating different areas of our reality. For breaking out of our own boxes as the only way we truly get a step up in progression. So finally, in conclusion, I wanted to touch quickly upon the word that I've mentioned a couple times, a few times in this video, that some people might find dark. And I don't understand why so. Dark, fine, but evil even. And that's the word occult. And what occult actually means is unknown, secret, or hidden. It doesn't mean worship of demons or anything like that. It is simply something that is studied that is unknown to the masses for whatever reason. And it is that reason which you should be worried about and contemplating and researching rather the word occult and what occultists and historians of such talk about. As in the agendas, you can learn oh so much about our diverse, corrupt, twisted, yet fascinating human history. So I would just like the listeners to acknowledge that word and what it means here and understand it and to not demonize it, nor any of the relating words such as the arcane or magic. 
spirituality, although that has a lot of different feelings and ideologies already attached to it, so I prefer to refer to these things as universal knowledge. Universal science, beyond what we have discovered so far as humanity, but we have discovered a portion of it. That's what universal science is. Not human science, or not religion. It's science that's there, that's always been there, that all laws abide by, and we as humans are just slowly touching upon it. And if there are people too ignorant or arrogant to understand that there is much more that we don't understand than we do, and they base their whole belief system on human science and only human science, then maybe those people need to learn a bit more about the great scientists that they so worship, because many, many of those great scientists have a very humble understanding in how much they don't understand. So some watching this may need to accept the idea that by watching these videos and this kind of way of thinking, they actually are delving into the occult. And even some of the videos where we go deeper on the mythical creatures. Although we don't teach any practices, there are things covered that are very occult, very secret, very unknown on some of these things. And there is nothing wrong or bad about that. It is our natural ability, our gift, to be curious. And we should be proud of that, rather than shun ourselves for looking into something we shouldn't be. It is the way we act upon it that we should be so, say, judgmental on. Knowledge brings light upon the darkness that creates fear. Knowledge is your flashlight that reveals that the scary silhouette in front of you is just a tree branch. And so carry your flashlight close to you at all times and be sure to upgrade upon it from time to time so that it can expand on its brightness to those things that go beyond the before reaching light. To be a thinker, to be a healthy skeptic, one must accept their own humility on the topic of reality and admit to the understanding that we know less rather than more. For even many atheists who follow limited human science personally do not know enough about these sciences to be able to dictate an ultimate understanding. As it takes years and books and books to study and understand science and the depths of physics and quantum physics and all that. So although it is easy to distrust and stop following a particular religion, it isn't that easy to develop a simplistic own belief system that's based only on a system of study by humans, as that is how atheists many times shun a religion, as that is also human-based studied and created, all limitations included. Nor obviously should many religious folk hold such arrogance that their way is the ultimate way, as their belief and dogma follow changed and altered guides of the most ancient of ways. And keep in mind that one must not forget that just as religion holds its obvious dogmas, so do the human scientific communities. To learn the occult, the arcane, the secrets of the world, the unknown, is to learn the agendas behind these dogmas and to go back to the roots of why what is, is. And that's being a healthy skeptic. And I am finishing up. But for example, next time someone speaks ill of snakes, for example, you think to yourself, what is their thought provocation? Is it just the fear of snakes and what they do not know about them? Or are they linking it with something religious? Something that their belief system taught them? Something they heard in a movie, they read in a holy script? Or something that they even heard of in a conspiracy theory? As we see through animal totems and animal medicine and animal powers, the snake is just another manifestation of lessons and purpose. It is another teacher given to us by nature. Don't hate on a snake unless you can hate on your own cat or dog, as they are also predatory and comparatively dangerous animals. A cat can be a mouse's worst nightmare. It's all about education. As far as reptiles, ghost snakes, and things like that, I've owned many animals such as this. I've had a love and a passion for all animals, but particularly I started with exotic ones and lizards and things like that. And as a child to an adult, when you keep animals, you learn a lot about them and from them, and it makes you a better person. Pay attention to this. How many people that you've met or see on TV or see around that work with animals a lot are just terrible people? Not many. They're quite humble and they're quite good people. Animals can teach us very much. 
and don't let anyone demonize them, for they were first on this planet. They were put here for whatever reason you want to believe, but they were here to live alongside us, and so with anything, we learn from each other. So I dearly hope you actually got through this, and this may be a new little bit of an area for World of Monsters, so please do let me know what your level of interest is on this topic in the comments section below. I'm really fascinated and curious about that. Share your knowledge and experiences that you have had with animal totems and spirits and things like that, as well as other things that we've mentioned in this video, as well as monster totems. You can always share that experience down below. And very importantly, do let me know what monster I should cover next because I even haven't chosen one. I've made this preparatory video also so that you guys can tell me which monster mythical creature totem should I cover next in the first actual episode of Monster Totems. And remember, enjoy these videos. If they're relevant to you, then enjoy them as so. If they're simply something fun or something just to think about on a rainy day, then let it be so. That's all this is meant to be, at least so far. It's just something fun. If you want it to be fun, if it's educational, let it be that. And if you haven't yet, check out our YouTube main page, our home page, to see what other monster series we have out there. If you have any requests for any monster type of video, do let us know. We have a great uh, Facebook group that's related to this channel. We also have an Instagram, and we're, um, I think, some other areas of the internet as well. So, thank you for watching. Until next time, you've been watching the first preparatory video to the monster totems here only at World of Monsters. Thank you.